Welcome to this door tutorial. So today we want to share about some best practices for building a responsive website. Here's the example that we will be building. It is a fully responsive website from the website structure to specific components. So we will break down all the steps, including how to design a responsive structure, organize layout into different sections, and last, building the website. First, let's start with how to design a responsive structure. Here I have built the layout inside our Dora editor, and let's go through the structure. To build a responsive website, we can start from making the bigger sections responsive, then work on specific components. The whole website is separated into four sections, and each section's top is connected to the previous section. For example, section 2 is connected to section 1, and section 3 is connected to section 2. In terms of the details inside sections, in the hero part, we have the title text centered. We also have built the navigation bar responsive with a nice padding. The next component we have is the card. The size of the card, image, and also the gap between each card are all responsive to the page width. In the last section, we started the background image as full screen, so we also need to set the width and height to 100 VW and VH here. So the above elements are the common elements we would consider to build as responsive elements so users can have a better browsing experience. Second, let's talk about organizing your layout into different sections. In this example, each section shows specific contents, and we want it to take up the whole page when they occur. We don't want to see contents from the other sections, so we set the section size as 100VW and 100VH. There are also fixed sections on top of the sections. The animation here is being fixed to the page center. When we scroll, it crosses section 1 and 2. So we need to separate it as a single section instead of placing it into section 1 or 2. When constructing each section, we also need to think about the relationship of each element with its section container. The text we have here is constrained to the top and left, and the other text is constrained to the right and bottom. Going through the relationship of each element with the container is critical in building a responsive website. When you build your website with sections, it makes the website's responsiveness being stable and adaptive to all devices, and gives you flexibility in making further changes. Last, let's build the website. We will go through some more details about responsiveness here. First, we set the canvas background color. Next, create a container with 100VW and 100VH. This will be our section 1 container. Select the text tool, type in the title, change the color, and set the width of the title to 70VW, and the type size as autofit. So it always takes up the same proportion of the page, no matter what the visitor's device size is. Then, set up the other text. To make the text structure stable, also connect the two subtext to the text title. Now we select all three elements and choose container selection. We align all of them to the center of the container. Then select the container and add horizontal and vertical center to the parent section. Next, we add the arrow icon, setting the width to 6VW, Add the top constraint to the bottom of the text group and the bottom constraint to the bottom of section 1. Now it will always be centered between the text group and the page edge. And don't forget to make it horizontally centered in the page. Next, let's make the responsive navigation bar. First, create the text and icons. Then container select these two items. Align them to the vertical center and also to the side. Next, set the width of the container as fill and the height as 80. Now the container will fill up the page and we add a 3VW constraint on the left and right to remain a margin. For the fixed section with the image sequence animation, after creating a section container with 100VW and VH, let's create an image widget with a width of 45VW. Upload the image sequence and make it align to horizontal and vertical center. We will work on the animation after we finish the whole website. For section 2, create a container with 100VW and 100VH as well, and add a top constraint to the bottom of section 1. Make sure their distance is 0. Also center it horizontally to the page. Create two text sections and place them to the top left and bottom right.
For section 3, we have a set of cards. Let's create a section container with 100 VW and 100 VH. To build a card, create a container, set the width to 25 VW and 50 VH. You can use any proportion you prefer here. Change the color, add a corner radius of 25 and select clip content. Next, let's add the text and create the button. In responsive designs, one way to manage dynamic content like text is to set the size as fill. So it will adapt to parent container. For the button, first create a container, change the radius, then place an icon inside of the container, center the icon to the container, and select the whole button, align it to the bottom right. For the text, align it to the bottom left. Set the width as fill and add a right constraint with 15 pixels. Then, add a 25 pixel padding for both horizontal and vertical. Also, when you set the width as fill, the text box will change rows automatically when it's too long. Then, upload the image and set the width as 100%. When you're setting values, we suggest using responsive values like VW, VH on the outside, for example, on the card size. And on inner parts, like the image size, use responsive values related to its parent container like percentage. And for the positioning, you can just use pixels. Drag to the top right and add a top and right constraint. Now, we can create it as a component and use the instance in our design. Go back to the editor, select the components tab, drag the instance out and change the contents. Next, let's select all three cards and click distribute horizontal spacing under constraints. You can change the gap by either dragging between the cards or set it manually on the constraint section. Container selection the three cards, center it horizontally and vertically. Then we add the title for this page. Add a constraint to the top of the container and a bottom constraint to the top of the cards, then align it horizontally. For section four, there's a full screen image behind, so create a 100 VW, 100 VH container first, then insert a image widget with 100 VW and 100 VH. Upload the image, add horizontal center and vertical center to this image widget. Next, create the text and button. For the button, we start with creating a container, then we put text and icons inside it. Then add a left constraint from the icon to the text. Also, Make the icon vertical center to the text. Then, set the container width and height as hug. Change the radius and also add a padding. This is how responsive buttons is made. When you change the button text, the size will be responsive as well. Group the text and buttons, and add horizontal center and vertical center. Now, the website is done. Let's add the animation. Select a fixed section, add a fixed keyframe at 0, go to 100, and fix it. Then, select the image sequence. Add a keyframe at 0, go to 100, set current frame as 100, set the width of the image as 65 VW, then drag to 150, set the frame to the last. The effect here is it enlarges to a point and stops, and it still plays the animation after we scroll past the second section. For the animation in section 4, we have the section being fixed for a while, and the image size will shrink down. So we start at 300 in the keyframe, add fix for the section 4 container, then we select the background image, add a keyframe, then go to 350, set the width as 80 VW, and change the border radius to 50. Last, remember to name all your sections. This helps to keep track of your projects. Now everything is done, let's preview the website again. So in today's tutorial, we demonstrated different aspects that could turn into responsive design on your website. From designing the structure, to separating layout into sections, and building the actual responsive website. That's all for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching.